guys welcome back to my channel if you are new my name is Libone I am a former au pair now international student studying in the US and today we're going to do a QA. and a I had posted maybe a week ago or so on my community tab to ask you guys to submit your questions through Google Forms since I am not on Instagram and um, you guys submitted some questions so today I will be answering them okay so let's get straight into it okay so the first question is also I cannot I can't see who submitted the questions, so it's anonymous, I guess. Um, but anyways, the first question is, hope you are doing great. How did you meet your boyfriend? Okay, so I met my boyfriend on a dating app called Hinge. And honestly, like, I was gonna give up on dating, period, because I was just not meeting the caliber of men I was interested in um, and I don't know just my dating experience in the u.s was just overall trash and i just did not enjoy it and also i did not have time to play with so obviously when i met my boyfriend i was like oh my goodness we're like two peas in a pod and it's so crazy thinking about it now because we're like two years and six months together and we're about to go on three years that's so insane um but yeah, don't give up on dating online. Dating online can be good, can be horrible. Um, but Hinge, I recommend Hinge. It doesn't have that, you know, kind of Tinder tab on it. Well, actually, I don't know, because it's been a while since I've been on there. But when I was using it, Hinge was a little bit more, at least appropriate. You could actually find someone to like genuinely date. But anyways, yes. Next question is, hey Libane, I just want to know, going into community college with a diploma in matric, can I be accepted to study? Um, the short answer is yes. Community college essentially ex accepts everyone that wants to study. So it doesn't matter if you were borderline failing or you failed or you did well. Um, obviously, how you did is going to depend on scholarship packages. And also, I think that community college matters or at least your grade matters once you're in the school. And if you're doing great while in community college, then you can get scholarships. But essentially, community colleges accept everybody. Even if you failed, you can still go to community college you'll get accepted. Next question is, hey Libone, I knew about the au pair program when I already had a child, so I wanted to ask if there's any overseas program you know besides au pairing. Um, the short answer to that is yes, there are some programs that I know. I mean, I know you can teach English in a lot of countries. I, you can work on a cruise ship. Um, I don't know if you're asking in terms of like being able to bring your child, but some programs I, there are programs out there i just don't know what the stipulations are so you would have to go research and find that information for yourself what's one thing on your bucket list that you hope to accomplish someday Ooh, okay this is a fun question i don't know you know i actually don't have bucket lists and stuff like that anymore or maybe i do but i just can't think of something but I do know for sure, like, I want to travel the world, but travel it in a, like, visiting local places, being among the communities, and doing less touristy stuff. I'm trying to think what else. You know, another thing that I would like to accomplish one day that's on my bucket list is, I'm not a great swimmer, uh, but my boyfriend is, and at some point when I get to his level, we are planning on traveling traveling to swimming competitions or like 5Ks or 10Ks where you're swimming. But I mean, they have some in Scotland, they have some in Hawaii, they have some like all over the globe. But again, I have to like become a really good swimmer. I don't know if I answered that question really well because I feel like I need to ponder on that. Uh, but yeah, I guess that's what I would do. Okay, next question is, is it possible for a South African college student to further their studies in the US? The short answer is yes. I'm not sure what exactly are you asking, but anybody can study in the US and further their studies in the US. Um, obviously, there are stipulations. Can you afford it? What kind of major degree are you pursuing? 
um, all those things. Okay, hey Libane, I've been a follower of yours for quite a while now, while you were an au pair actually. Oh. But anyways, my question for you is, how challenging has it been for you to create new relationships, new friendships, just overall be in an, a whole new environment away from your longtime friend and now kind of having to start over? <sighs> this is actually a really good question. Okay, so when I was an au pair, I didn't really care a lot about family, friends. I was just like, I'm just going to do me, live my best life. But now that I'm getting a little bit older, I am valuing a lot of my friendships, uh, family. Like, I still am in close contact with my best friend from high school, Kaila. Hi! Um, Garabo. But anyways, um, it's really hard and I really don't like... That's why I don't want to move anymore. I, don't, I just want to stay in one place now. Because it's really hard starting over, trying to find friends, trying to meet people, trying to create your community. And I think the in my age group right now, a lot of people, you know, are married, have kids. It's a little bit harder to form those relationships. And I, I believe to think that I'm a weird person, more like a weird nerd kind of girl. Um, I'm introverted, but I'm extroverted, but I really love my time alone. And it kind of also makes it hard for me to make friends. But I think that, you know, it's just a learning, it's a, I don't know how to, overall it's a hard thing and I'm learning every day on how to combat that, but I'm preserving and taking care of my friendships that I have, that I have had for a long time. So it takes a lot of work. Because again, if you are working a lot, being a student or whatever, just going through the motions of being in a new area, whatever, it's hard for you to be still in contact with everybody else while you're going through this change and it can be a bit challenging. So I will say it, it is hard and it's something that, you know, it takes time to build those friendships or relationships or whatever. Hope you're well. I see that you would like to pursue law. Oh my gosh, yes. What motivated you to study law? I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep this question short because it is actually a very long. You know, there's like a whole story to this. But essentially, what motivated me to study law was my au pair experience. There are many things that still upset me till this day that were allowed to happen that would not happen if an individual was an American. So essentially, it is downplaying the fact that, oh, if you do not have the American status, then essentially, you don't have rights over here. Um, so that is, that is how deep I'm going to dive into that question. But essentially, it inspires me to advocate for individuals like myself, meaning au pairs or underrepresented um, minorities that come from different countries that come here to pursue whatever they want to pursue and then in the end they get burned because oh you're not American kind of thing so essentially that's what motivated me to do that well that's the backstory that I've always had but I never tr wanted to really dive into it because I thought that I wanted to do something else does gap year make you experience new things for instance you did au pair. Oh, I think this question is asking, I guess essentially if you take a gap year, do you experience new things? Of course, I mean, it depends what you do during that gap year, depends what you do for that gap year. Like, are you just staying home, sitting at your couch, or are you actually out there exploring what you will like. I mean, it's essentially a year for you to be able to experience things that you like, explore, see what you like, see what you don't like, and kind of go from there. What countries are on your bucket list to visit in 2024 and beyond? So, because I got, I renewed my visa, I'll be able to travel outside of the US now. And my boyfriend lived in Vietnam for five years, and he really loves um, Asia because that's where he used to study and also live and also learn the languages so he definitely wants to take me somewhere there I'm not sure if it's gonna be 2024 but 
for this year i think the only um trips that are planned or hopefully will happen are snowboarding trips and essentially that would be wherever it snows um, utah is on the list colorado is on the list maybe um tahoe i don't know but essentially there's no um at least for 2024 countries beyond okay i want to go to france i've been there but only like in the mountains like i actually want to like experience the culture and everything i want to go to new zealand i want to go to many many countries in africa i feel like i did not get the opportunity to travel to many countries in africa i want to go to namibia i want to go to mozambique i want to go to botswana i want to go to you know all those countries yes and um i want to go to a few countries in Europe. I want to go to Estonia. I want to go to um, Czech Republic. I want to go. Oh, I want to go to Colombia. I really want to go to Colombia. Oh my gosh. So, whenever, I don't know when that's going to happen, but I would really love to visit some southern, South American countries as well. Um, Brazil. Oh, so, oh my gosh. Okay, so now, like, they're all coming back to me, and I'm like, okay, definitely want to go to that one. I want to go to that one. But, um, essentially those are the countries that are on my bucket list hey Libana, i hope you are still well i would like to ask about au pairing i'm really interested how much money do i need to go to another country well for my au pairing which documents do i need and also was your au pairing au pairing experience smooth okay so how much money do you need it depends again the agency that you have and which country you looking to au pair in if you want to au pair in the u.s i heard through the grapevine that you might be paying 27,000 rand i don't know how accurate that is please don't quote me on that but again i au paired or at least i paid my au pair fees eight years ago so and when i paid it it was 13,000 rand so the times have changed it might be a lot more expensive today which i would assume that it is but your documents i mean you need your passport you need um police clearance you need your health medical papers you need obviously your pay application you need a visa those are your general au pair paperwork i might be leaving some things out again it's been a while since i've talked anything au pair over here so and was my au pair experience smooth i mean overall it was smooth me getting over there me doing the whole au pair thing but during your time you'll definitely have some bumps in the road um you know clash of personalities the area you in are you able is it a walkable city is there public transportation there's so many other factors that could hinder your experience but that's why it's important to make a informed decision when choosing a family that way you don't have too many bumps on the road um okay next one is it better to okay this person gave me like six questions in their own little question tab but the first question is is it better to do au pair in america or other countries personally au pairing in america was better because it's an english-speaking country and i did not want to go to a country where i had to learn another language and could potentially provide more barriers than there already are so that's my question my, that's my answer on that how was your pair experience Ooh, i need to make a whole video on that and i did i have not made a video on that because i wanted to know that i was completely done with au pairing before i started to trash talk it but um, my experience was fine i mean again i would not be here if i was not an au pair and i will never never look down on that experience because it did make me who i am today um but again there are some things that i just did not agree with and i was pretty vocal about it or at least i tried to be vocal about it on my channel um but i never you know sat down and actually talk about that experience because also i want to well anyways yeah is it better to do au pairing in the u.s and then transitioning to apply to universities for me it was because i was able to get acclimated to the u.s culture to the u.s application college system it just provided a smoother transition for me i don't know about other people but for me yes how is the transition like from being an au pair to being an international student okay 
The transition was a little bit hard because when you're an au pair, you're used to being essentially taken care of. Your host family takes care of you, they buy you whatever you want, you use their car, they pay for everything. All you gotta do is just like work a bunch of hours and then you're living your best life. When you transition into a, being an international student, you have to start from scratch. You need to figure out where are you living? Are you gonna have a roommate? Are you gonna live with people? How are you gonna get to school? Is there, you know, it's like you have to actually now think about things that you did not have to think about before, which essentially can make it a little bit harder if you don't have those connections or those, um, the monetary resources or whatever it is. So it can get a little bit, it can be a hard transition, but anyways, my battery is dying. Um, okay, I changed my battery. Green and red flags for host families. Girl, I think I made a video about this. Check in my au pair playlist. Next question. Which website did you use to apply? Well, I found au pair in America and I went through, um, you know, their application process. The agency's name is called Au Pair in America. And when you go online, you'll find their application to apply to be an au pair. How was apartment hunting after au pairing? Honestly, I did not have to worry about this until last year um, because after au pairing, essentially, I uh, stayed with some people. Ugh, those were some tough times thinking about it, but yeah. I didn't have to up, uh, apartment hunt until last year when I graduated from San Antonio College, if that makes sense. Yes. But I guess, how was it? I mean, it was fine. You just call, hey, can I look at some apartments? And also, related to that, get your credit score early, okay? Get a credit card so you can build your credit because you cannot get an apartment without a credit score. And I'm so glad that I did this early, early, early on because now I have a great credit score. And you know, with a credit score, honey, you can get whatever you want. You can get a nice car, you get a nice apartment, you can get a nice phone. On, like, There's so many things that a credit score opens for you, but you need to build your credit, so. Hi, Gorga. Is that how you pronounce it? Gorga? Gorja? I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, we're the same age, and since you started uni a bit later, I'm planning to take a whole new route by going back to uni and starting a new different undergraduate degree. How did you start and fight against comparing yourself to people your age that are further than you in your life? Ah! This is a very, very good question, and this is something that I struggled with. And it's part of the reason why I also deleted Instagram and TikTok. Now, I don't like to compare myself to people because again, I know that my journey is different. I know that, you know, the paths that I took to get to where I am are different. And a lot of the times I do not compare myself to people who are not living the life that I want to live. Now, if a person my age is living the life that I want to live, it gets a little bit tricky because it's like, oh my gosh, this is the age that I should be experiencing this. Oh, this is the age. But again, you can experience whatever you want at any age. Um, so I kind of obviously had to remove those distractions and I had to tell myself that I'm just on a different path. I'm on a different journey and my life is going to look a little bit different from someone that their life is like this. But again, uh, going back to your question, it's all about, I guess, just it's you versus you. Look at you, look at where you are, look at what you've accomplished, be proud of that and keep pushing forward. It, it, it is something I really struggle with a lot sometimes because I'm like, okay, uh, you know, and especially with the settle down aspect of things. It's like, okay, well, this person is, you know, this, so this person is that, and that's something that I want, but I don't have it. But again, it's like, I know that my time is coming and I need to be patient because it will come. You just need to be patient. And I'm exercising patience and I'm getting out the distractions because if I see those people in front of me, then I, it's gonna exacerbate those feelings. But if I just push it to the side and I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm actually content with where I'm at. Then it just helps you 
enjoy your journey a little bit more enjoy where you are in life because i mean these things happen and you just gotta have some systems put in place to tackle those feelings and those things so yeah okay we have a few more questions left hi Lebona, can you make a video on how you tackle your interviews sure most definitely i will do that i will say that i think because i have a youtube channel and i'm constantly talking in front of a camera i'm essentially practicing my speaking skills all the time it does help me i think personality helps a lot but i will make a video because i am a peer career coach and i help students um ace their interviews essentially like career wise um so yes i will make that video uh do universities in the u.s take mathematical literacy hi well this question ne, is is a little bit tricky because it depends on what you want to study if you want to do engineering of course no you cannot do you they, they won't accept you with math literacy um you know some schools can be flex on it some schools are not it depends on the school you want to apply to but according to my understanding is that let's say you have maths lit and you want to apply to a school they might accept you but you will have to take a course to bridge you to into knowing uh pure math if that makes sense hey oc libone hope you are well i joined your channel a couple months ago and i'm so glad i did i'm matriculating next year and cannot wait i just wanted some tips and advice on how you manage to stay motivated and push yourself the way you do i currently attend a home private school in alberton and we work through the cambridge curriculum which is definitely not for the week I hope to go to college or university overseas once I figure out what I want to study and I would really appreciate it if you could give me some guidance on basically not to give up when it comes to school and studying. Thank you and I wish you nothing but the best on the journey, on your journey moving forward. So the question here is how do you manage to stay motivated and push yourself? The short answer is I want to live a lavish lifestyle at some point. I want to be able to live comfortably, go to wherever country I want to when I want. I want to not struggle for money. I grew up, my grandmother raised me and you know, it was tough sometimes. And I think that although she was a nurse and she was making big bucks, she was a penny pincher. <laughs> and there were times where you know we had the money to do something but she would just not want to because we were saving for rainy days like one thing my grandmother has taught me is to save for rainy days and she did she saved a lot of her money um which obviously cut into how we lived our life and you know there were moments where i would want something but i'd had to i'd have to wait until whenever the next year or whenever because x y and z so that experiment experience taught me that essentially with the life that i want to live and the things that i want to do um i want to live comfortably i want to be able to be like oh okay wait a king i'm stressed i want to hop on a plane to california tomorrow let's do it without having to worry about the money in my account so a lot of the times that is my motivation to keep moving forward is that oh so be within the books because honestly life is really hard and if you don't really work hard and you don't have that you know that wealth in your family or something to fall back on then why are you cruising why are you taking naps you've got the wealth generational wealth in your family no i don't have that so i feel like that kind of pushes me a lot of the times to study and the area that i live in i'm surrounded by i wouldn't say wealthy people but i'm surrounded by people that have good jobs that have good cause like i see g-wagons all the time and i'm like okay that's gonna be me in a g-wagon one day but uh being surrounded by that is just a constant reminder to me that hey you know what this is the life that i want to live um and i want to live large but not in a braggy kind of way like i want to live large in a way where i have the funds to do what i want i don't wear name brands i don't you know that's not my kind of living large my kind of living large is being able to 
you know, I'm into snowboarding. So if I want to go take a snowboard trip, I want to be able to take a snowboard trip. Just studying and staying focused will save you from a lot of trouble, from a lot of debt, from a lot of unnecessary drama. Just mind the business that will pay you, which is studying, if that makes sense. Okay, would you suggest going to the US from SA with only money for the first semester essentials and plan to work for the rest? Or should I just wait until I have all my funds? Um, when you get your visa, they're gonna ask you to present financial paperwork that can cover your whole four years. So, or if you go to a community college, they're gonna ask you to provide paperwork that you can cover the two years. The short answer to this question is yes. Of course you can do whatever you wanna do. Just make sure you have money for rainy days. And also I would recommend, I would recommend, oh, if you want to work on campus, you need to be very early with that. You can get the jobs, you can. There's plenty of jobs. And during the summer, you can work as many hours as you please. But obviously during the school year, it's when it's a little bit limited to 20 hours, but you can do it. I mean, anybody can do anything that if they put their mind to it, so yeah. All right, the last question. Is it advisable to study in the US straight after grade 12? This question is, it depends. If you know what you want to do and you're passionate about it, go for it. I was passionate about psychology for the longest time until I realized that, wait, this is not actually something that I want to do for the rest of my life. Because essentially I wanted to work with special needs children. And, you know, I really got burnt out working with children that I don't want to see a child in sight. Sorry, but I'm not sorry. I don't want to see a child in sight but again you can start your career early if you go straight into school if you take a gap years you can figure out what you like and what you don't like and maybe take the route of pursuing something that you do like that you never thought that you would like um so yeah i hope that answers y'all's q a's questions all right so those are all the questions that were uh submitted through the google forms um, I had so much fun answering you guys' question and again look out for the community tab on YouTube that's where I will mostly interact with you guys um, because again I do not have social media and I do not plan on returning so thank you guys for tuning in and watching my video and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye! 1, 2, 3, 4!